So, you've got the latest in cutting edge blended technology, but your old procedural files didn't quite make the journey. Not a problem. All right, so the good news is most everything is the same. The bad news is you probably won't be able to get the exact same results you had in 2.8. If you followed my procedural scratch video and tried to open the same file in 8.1, you're gonna see this. Don't worry, it's a pretty easy fix. All you gotta do is go to the color ramp and drag black down to about 0.07. Now, the reason everything looks so different is because they changed a lot of the values for all the nodes. This was the default noise texture in 2.8, and this is the default noise texture in 8.1. And it's the same case for a lot of the other nodes as well. Likewise, the values in the color ramp might not match exactly what they used to be in 2.8. Okay, so let's take care of the easy stuff first. Every single image node now has this 3D thing, and 99% of the time, you are gonna leave it the hell alone. But just so you understand what it does, 3D just means it's mapping in the X, Y, and Z axi. If you change it to 2D, it will only map the top and bottom. And if you change it to 40, you will be texturing in four dimensions. That's right, Blend is no longer 3D software, it's 4D software. Congratulations, you can now put four dimensional procedural mapping experience on your resume and it will be true, because that is how we roll. But really, 4D just means it's the same thing as 3D, but also gives you the W. W is just a number, that is literally all it is. Treat it like you would any other number based controller. If you set W to 1 and then drag W into metal, it's gonna treat the slider as if metal was dragged all the way to one, so on and so forth. It's also tied to the position of your texture. So you can use it to see the different areas of your texture without changing the settings. And if you change it to 1D, you get nothing but the W, because you're only asking for one dimension. Go figure. All right, let's address the one node that got a total makeover, Baroni. Dragging scale up increases the amount of detail in the image, but makes it smaller. Randomness seems a little weird at first, but this is how it works. If you drag randomness to zero, you'll see Veroni's true form. So the closer to zero, the closer to this shape you will see. The closer to one you get, the more you will see a pattern. Which pattern you see depends on which mode you're on. The four available modes are Euclidean, Manhattan, Chebby Chev, and Minkowski. But again, all of them look like this if you set randomness to zero. Now, last we have this F1 thing, and I think it's easier to explain when random is set to zero. F1 just means standard. F2 divides each cell into small of parts. Smooth is the exact same as F1, but blurry. Distance outlines the cell walls in black, and sphere radius gives F1 without the colors. Okay, we're almost there. So I've had Veroni plugged into color this whole time because it's easy to see and understand. But if you drag distance into color, and everything will be shaded in black and white instead. Believe it or not, everything is actually still exactly the same. Each cell is just shaded now instead of being a solid color. Here's a cool trick. If you drag position into color, you'll get this nice, soft, cool evening sunset shade of colors instead. Or you can just use it the way you're supposed to and drag it into the vector of another image to apply whatever Veroni pattern you want to it. But uh, that's up to you. The last thing is, you might have noticed that the 2.8 options for closest and crackle are gone. If you would like to create the crackle effect, you're gonna have to use two Veroni nodes with one set to F2 and the other set to F1. Drag them both into a subtract node and then drag that into a color ramp. Not really sure why, but that's the only way to do this now. And just to recap a few things you can do with Veroni, the crackle Minkowski effect works great for scratches, especially combined with Musgrave, and can also be used to create sharp detail for things like stained glass. If you use this exact same setup but change Minkowski to Manhattan or Chebby Chev, you'll get a nice cityscape outline that you can use for procedural building generations or tech designs. And if you use that exact same setup but set to Euclidean instead, you get an awesome base for stone walls and dragon or reptile scales. You can also get a similar look without the setup if you use Euclidean set to distance to edge. And if you use Euclidean set to F1, it makes great microbe and amoeba formations if you're doing organic things. But honestly, you can put this stuff together to make anything you want. So be sure to play around for a few minutes to see what you can find. And that is it. Sorry that was a little long, but I'm trying to get to the fun stuff as fast as I can. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.